feeling that this match, while Sergey is a, a very worthy opponent, you know, he is the English champion. You know, he is Sergey. We all love him. What are you doing? I don't, that was another great main event. Like we had another chop fest like last week. I know I came on here all chopped out last week, but this week we had Smoke and Mirrors doing the thing with the chop fest. So it's almost like the air guitar finished with the chop. Air guitar finished with the chop. There's so many chops. So many but it's Mountain Now time for now on, so I don't Mountain care. Now. What Mountain yeah, Now. Yeah, so time. I don't care what you say in chat. I'm tired of the ridiculing months in and months out about standard and daylight. You know what? right there to get it's mountain now time for that one mountain now and it'll be eastern now time pretty soon too so that's going to be a thing that came in handy that night i'll tell you that much right now yo what's up we're here talking about How bats. We doing, everybody talking about bats huh? hi everybody no, that, that bat was necessary the other night man if you watch the show the other night you'll find out why <laughs> yeah Oh, shit. Hold up. What'd you do already? We just got here. We just started. I'm not going to chew gum in front of these people. Come on now. Oh, I thought we were muted again. No. Why not? I, I may need a cough drop at some point. Uh, that happens. Well, you have a valid reason. Yeah, I was touched by death. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Welcome to a special edition of Dudes and Belts recharge here on a sunday night ladies and gentlemen how we all doing got mr fourth row queen vampires the hort plays one player start how's it going everybody welcome 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 What's up everybody boy do we, we got a show here. for you it guys sunday and it's going to be a hell of a show man what a show last night supercharge was my god yeah it was before we get Before into we close it, out the winner before yeah, right? we before we get into everything tonight and kind of what's planned this evening, because obviously plans have changed. Let's introduce the panel this evening. On the left, we have the one that lives way up there on the East Coast of Maine. He is the one and only Coastal Crusader and Noel Summit already gifting five tier one subs. They're going to make us dance tonight, fellas. Oh, oh my I goodness. Don't dance. It's been a After my absence, uh, what an amazing show last night. What an amazing performance Samore put on. I can't wait to talk about that. That was one of the gutsiest performances I've ever seen in wrestling. And on the right, he is your resident masshole himself, the one and only referee, Marky Pins. You bet your ass, Coastal Crusader. What a show last night. Gutsy four-match performance, and out comes Zamore as the charge champion from Supercharge. We're going to get there, but so much more happened, and we got ourselves a clip that we have to really kind of sneaky dive into mm -hmm. later on this evening, because my goodness, did the landscape of RMP change over Excellent. the course of the weekend. Stay right here. All right, and I am your host, Johnny Deathrop. I don't even think I, I introduced Deathrop. myself. How you doing? What's Hi, up? Hey, D squared. What's up? All right. So, obviously, tonight is typically a rewind night, but due to what happened last night, and actually this whole entire weekend, as Marky said just recently, the landscape of Rocky Mountain Pro has officially changed, and we are going to talk all about it tonight. So, yes. Changed we... or reverted? It changed either way. Because we uh, have a new RMP champion and a new charge champion. So there is a lot of changing. Um, we were we were planning on doing Milestone 4 tonight. We are at that point now. However, we are going to push that back to next week because obviously Supercharge was last night. And it wouldn't be right for us just to skip over uh, Supercharge that happened last night. Plus, we kind of want... The encyclopedia Lucas Bradwell to be here. He is not able to be here tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. He's got a lot of personal stuff going on currently, so yeah, he has the night the off right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we want him to be here for Milestone Four when we start watching it because we are going to need his expertise in the matter. So, yes, tease. Like I like you put that tease. I'm trying not to let the boss know when I say expertise. 
The expertise, expertise guy. Yes, He's a wicked go. expert. Yeah, he is. So He's milestone media of encyclopedia. With, with my congestion, it makes my accent come out even more. Yeah, it does. It's way <laughs> hotter. <laughs> and we have KD subscribing at tier one for fifty What's up, KD? months. Uh, What's up, KD? Fifty months, dude. Fifty months. That's got to be a record. It's got to be a record, right? I think. If I had so a that's, buck that's for that's every month, I could almost get breakfast at Dunks tomorrow morning. Almost. They'll mess it up, anyways, dude. Dude, it was like four ten for a large coffee today at Dunks. Price went up again. Four ten. Four ten. Four ten for yeah. It's large insane. It's four ten. At at the Dunks next to my house in New Hampshire, tax free, sales tax free, Salem, New Hampshire. I'm plastered out New Hampshire rather. Four ten for coffee. Screw that. That is like wallet abuse. Thank I love my I, Keurig. I, I, I just I make the hell with it. I'm gonna, carry, right. I'm gonna find a way to like build a shelf in my car and just put my Keurig in my car. We are up at Dunks no more. Never mind. I was gonna say oh, something, Jesus. but now we are officially on a hype train, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to Queen Vampires cheering 600 freaking biddies. Yes, that merch is in the works. I'll tell you that right now. It is in the works. Mister Four right makes a valid point. point. I never even thought of that. Why don't they just charge a dime and say what they really mean? Just, just do that. I, I, <laughs> I'm more. I, I'd be more. I'm more pissed about four ten than I would if it was four twenty. I'd be like, nice. You'd giggle and pay them the money and. Right. Right. Whoa. But, whoa. They were, whoa. Whoa. Oh, right, whoa. Right. Whoa. Oh, no. We're already oh, no. at level two. Apparently, we just skipped oh, no. over level one. I don't know what the we hell did. that was we about. We trashed level one. <laughs> we trashed level one, dude. Like, level one had no shot. So What's let me up? let me go back here because now I'm lost. I just missed a few things here. Lost, yeah. And L Lady Catherine's just adding on to it here. We have Queen with a hot dogs. Guys, oh, oh relax, relax. Oh, Jesus. now you don't want to dance, huh? Oh, no, I'm. No, I'm. No, oh, I'm God. trying. No, no, I'm trying right, to I'm find trying where to I was. Because I can. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Well. Okay. We're here. So Queen cheered another six hundred. We got that. Yes. We got Yaden. did a bunch of stuff. Bunch of stuff. Yeah, I know. Um, okay. Yaden gifted a tier one. Queen gave out a tier one. Lady Catherine cheered 200. Uh, Jen with a huge five bomb. Literal right. five bomb in the chat here. Thank you, Jen. Queen with another Yo, 600 geez, bits coming down. And all of a sudden, we're at level three. Jeez. Uh, I don't know. And we got some great names here too. Le Do Math we? Champion. The Le Math Champion. He can keep track of the hype train. Le Is Math that Champion. Like keep track of that. Oh, we got another 600 from Queen. Egg my head. Got a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Egg my head. Erma Gerd. Erma Gerd. Erma Gerd. You remember that? The Goose Pamps. All right, what? What other ones do we have? Uh, oh what plays got a got a gift from Mister Yaden. So really, who kicked off the hype train? Yeah. First off, who who was the guilty moment. one? It was Queen. Queen. Queen was the guilty party. Well, no, Queen's... and she's at it again. She's at it again. Yeah. Well, well, she's Queen again. and KD oh, jumped man. in too. Queen has been wanting us to dance again ever since we did the one with Lucas. I know. I know. She is committed to the oh, cause. That's why we, oh no, we can't dance tonight because Lucas would have to be a part of it. That's so if true. we do hit no, this, that is, it, it wouldn't be no, tonight. I'm sick. No, I'm sick. no, 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 no. We're making I'm making an executive decision. Coastal yeah. sick and, and Lucas isn't here. So it would have to be something we'd lead the show off with next Sunday night. Would be a a a, a four man hey, chicken dance. Wait, wait, wait. Is it Milestone, is it milestone four in two parts? Uh, it's in four parts, technically. We're doing the first two next week and then the next two hey, the week I, after. I, I have an idea for the intermission between parts if we hit it. That'd be a great idea. I was completely unprepared and not knowing that chicken dance was possible, I would have consumed far more Red Bull today to keep myself more awake. But if you want to see Lucas Bradwell do the chicken dance. With... <laughs> no, we did the chicken dance last time. We have to come up with something else. Oh, we're going to do something different? Oh, yeah. We're going to do the Macarena? We do yeah. the that's what exactly we can do that. We can do that. 
we figured out how to put the music through the Discord the so you guys can hear it. It'd be wicked. Oh, God. It'd be wicked hard to, like, try to do, like, the electric slide over here. Like, do no, the bluey playing. dances is what Katie is saying. What is the We're not going dance? to dance mode, bingo, okay? <laughs> I don't know what the bluey dance right. is. My kids are older than that. Kids are too old for bluey. Well, okay. Yeah. Old for bluey, okay. But... Okay, everybody's going way too fast here. I lost my Sprockets. place again. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Fordo is a great idea. We what? dance like they did on Sprockets. When now is the time that we dance? Yes. Oh, the Charlie Brown. Yes. No, no. It, it was an old Mike Myers skit from Saturday Night Live. It was called Sprockets. Yeah. It was like a, a, like a German cyberpunk kind of set. Where it, it was right. just... Awesome. So I am going to start. We we only have yeah, a minute yeah. twenty five left in this level three, so we might not even have to worry about it. All right. So we are. I'm just going to start after level two. We have Queen with another. God. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. We're not going to have to worry about it. Do you, do you know the faithful? Do you see what these people do? Do you see how much of ass they kick? Can I give them a goal? Can I read something? No. <laughs> can, can, can I just catch up? <laughs> I have to thank Probably these people. Not. We okay, so so fun fact: we're at sixty nine subscribers. Nice, 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 nice. 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 <laughs> at some point, I don't laugh at that, but it was not today. I it definitely won't be tomorrow. I will always be seven years old and laugh. All at right, that. so that's Queen, the thing: like you can get older in age, but you don't have to grow up. All right, Queen with six hundred, Queen with another six hundred, Queen with another six hundred. KD with a gift. Queen with a gift. Lady Catherine with a gift. Just your average gen thousand freaking biddies. Yeah, that's right. KD with another gift. And that was, okay, I'm caught up now. I think. If I missed you, my bad. Oh, uh, it's time to dance. It's peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Where are you Where are you Where are you Where are you <laughs> we in maracas though yeah we do i got a baseball bat peanut butter jelly peanut butter jelly peanut butter jelly with a big boss bat <laughs> i have nothing to chip in except some lousy channel points and a highlighted message <laughs> you chip in by being here hunter we love it oh we got mass hole word of the day boom right there oh so rem okay remember that one come up with something all right, yeah. We have yep. just Here's your average gen something. with 500 more freaking biddies. Here we I go. I got one for you, Marky. You could tell them about Marathon Monday because that's coming up soon. It is. I bet of they months. don't know what Marathon Monday is. Marathon Monday means a lot of different things here since 2013. It's it true. does. It and does. Marathon Monday means a lot of different things around here. That's right. true. Queen and Vampires. There's not a lot of good accent words for that. Queen Vampirus redeemed Lucas RMP fun fact for 5,000. If Lucas is here, he can... Go. Well, if Lucas is in chat, he can pop one in there. Um, yes. Uh, if uh, not, well... Marathon it, Monday is the Boston Marathon Day, but yeah. also the Sox play... It's also Patriots Day, I do believe. Yes. Yep. That's a and holiday. the Sox play during the middle of the marathon. They usually have a 10 a.m. game, which is unheard of in Boston. Yep. So by the time the game gets done, you usually can go outside and go to the finish line and see pretty much the first group cross. All right. So we are at two minutes and 21 seconds into level four, I believe. It's not showing four, but I believe it's four. So, again, I think we might have locked out. And we yeah, have we, Queen's just dropping points, man. We're just dropping <laughs> points. Sorry. She so ran out of biddies and just dropping points right now. I'm going to clear out mass hole word of the day right now. Uh, I just came up with one. If you come to Boston and if you say the word monster to anybody, nobody is going to think of a person, a movie, a character, not drink. It doesn't. Nope. If you come to Boston and even say the word monster, somebody was going to be like, oh, you were at Fenway. You were at Fenway Park around here. You talk about the monster and it's the green monster and left left field at Fenway Park. It might be an obvious one to people, but it's like don't if you want to talk about Fenway, you could just ask for directions to Fenway Park. You could just walk around and say, "Hey, how do I get to the monster?" 
and everybody will direct. Don't you forget the garden. Fenway Park. Don't forget the garden. That was another one. That's a different one. That's garden. a different mass hole. That's a different word. That's a different word. Well, that's coming from one to the other. From old man Jarris. Lucas, trying to save the oh, hype train here. One. Oh, Lucas here. I'm here in spirit, He's here in guys. spirit. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Don't forget the garden. Yeah, it's true. That's yeah. true. It's the new garden now. All right, so we'll get a two for one. You get a two for one out of this one. The new garden, the old garden is special to everybody oh here God. in Boston. That's anybody over, what, 30, 35? Yeah. I mean, the garden, the garden closed in 95? Yeah. 94, because the Fleet yeah. Center opened in 95, right. which is now what okay. they call the new garden. It was called the Fleet Center. Uh, but, yeah, it either early 95 or because the Fleet Center, the new garden opened in 95. And there was such an uproar in the city of Boston that they called it the Fleet Center, that nobody called it the Fleet Center. We all just kept calling it the Garden. And eventually, they ended up changing it to... Well, TD like, bought it, and, imme- and as soon as TD bought Fleet, they changed it to the TD Garden. The TD Garden, like, immediately. It was never, like, the TD Bank Arena or Fleet nothing Center like that. Is what it was, it, the Fleet Center. The Fleet Center, right. It pissed off everybody in the city of Boston that had been to the... Even though this arena is far superior... Far superior to the old Boston seats. Garden. Now, there's parts where you see on tickets that say obstructed view. That was yes. different in the Boston Garden. There were no. literally seats that you paid for and you couldn't see shit. So, in 1993, I remember this. I was 12 years old. And I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. Anybody who knows me, I love Billy Joel. I keep an armada of Billy Joel in my car. I love listening to Billy Joel. We saw Billy Joel at the guy. It was one of my first concerts of my life. My mom took me and my sister and my dad, like the four of us went as a family. And in 1993, we saw Billy Joel on the River of Dreams tour. And my ticket, my ticket only, because it was my dad wasn't going to, because my dad paid for it. My mom was my mom. My sister got away with everything when I was a kid. Okay, everything, even though I'm the oldest child. She was in the middle. She got away with everything. So I got the obstructed view ticket, and I had to see Billy Joel like this. Around the pole. Around the pole. Right. The actual supports were literally in front of a chair. And you ran the risk of getting there. were no seat (laughs) upgrades. There were no none of that stuff. All right. None of that stuff. So before we get on topic here, before we actually talk about what happened this weekend, because obviously a lot happened this weekend, I do want to point out in chat, a Lee Mouth Champion. As a diehard Tigers fan, I can't say I'm a Red Sox fan by any means, but they That's sure beat start. being the Yankees fan. Uh, you know what? We love anybody that is a Red Sox fan and anybody that is not a Yankee fan around here. We're all in spirit. You don't have to be a Sox fan. You just can't be a Yankee fan, and we could be butts. We could be butts. There are certain stadium was cool too. There are certain Short Yankees court. you're allowed to respect here in Boston. Derek Jeter is one of those Yankees. You yep. can respect him. Yep. A Rod, no, we don't. We, we do not respect nope. purse slapping. Mariano nope. Rivera, respect the hell out of that man. Derek Jeter, mm-hmm. respect the hell out of that Paul man. Mino, Pino Martinez, they were real Yankees. A Rod, we liked A Rod for a while until he smacked Veritech right in the purse when he was trying to run up the field. Oh no, that was Bronson Arroyo. That was Bronson, that was Bronson. Arroyo. He smacked the ball out of Arroyo's, and then after that, we were like, "No." Well, you also yeah. got to remember the fight he had with Veritech no. too. Oh, you mean the one where Veritech ass. punched him right in the face? Yeah, punched right him right, push. right in the nose. That's it what like, started the whole 2004 comeback. Yeah, you can buy that picture. At like Fenway Park merch stands and anywhere else, the picture of Veritech shoving his glove in A-Rod's face, that's like a Mount Rushmore picture that a lot of people have in their it, houses. It's in my son's room. I bet your money it is. I bet oh, your cash money it is. All right. So we have a fun fact. We have a fun fact from Lucas. He's redeeming yes. now. My fun fact is this past Friday, David Drake became the third two-time RMP champion, joining Curtis Cole and Atiba. All right. Two out of three ain't bad. And I have to say this one by Lee Math Champion. Fever Pitch is still Fever Pitch is still one of the best movies ever. However, can't get that Tessie song out of my head right now. Oh man. Yeah, that's yeah. Dude, that was you know how that was can't that's not even the most dude. popular baseball song no. in Fenway. But do you remember how big Dropkick Murphy's got after that? How oh that my song, god, yeah. 
It was everywhere on the radio. Like, yeah, we used to have this thing called radio. Like, it was in your car and you used to, like, to all the kids watching, like, you know, we used to tune it. And we didn't have Spotify and stuff back in the day. But, like, it was on every station that wasn't, like, R&B or, like, slow. Yeah. Any poppy music channel like that, rock channel, every day. Six, seven times you could hear it. And it is. It's, like, cracked to the brain. It doesn't go away. (laughs) Caroline. All right. That's 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 awesome. That that does. Let's take it in bah, now. Bah, bah. Let's take it in. <laughs> if we have time, we'll be able to shoot the shit more later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But first, we do have to give a shout out to the RMP faithful. Hive train was completed at 18 subs and 4,700 wow. freaking biddies. That's you a guys, lot of biddies. You guys are the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting us see your biddies. We appreciate it. Easy there, Tiger. Thank you. Easy I said biddies. You're talking about putting it on a t-shirt. Okay. I know I am. Right. Because it's good. It is good. It's good. good. It's good. good. It's good. Good shit. <laughs> That's good shit. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to talk about what we came live for is to talk about supercharge. I said that wrong, didn't I? Let me just let me just give that. Hold I'm up. trying to figure. Yeah, would, yeah. Hold up. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. It's wait. With the double L, and yeah. then you carry the Q, yeah. and yes, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I did work. There's like an accent at three in the morning till today. Day mark so, in there somewhere. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to use myself being tired for that one. So, all right. Anyways, let's move on, folks. <laughs> Good idea. Great idea. All right. To, recommend to open <laughs> <laughs> to open things up here for supercharge that happened last night. If you haven't seen it, go on the YouTube channel, become a member at nine dollars and ninety nine cents. You'll be able to watch it. It's basically a DVR. It's there, right? It's right there for you. Um, immediately when you uh, become a member, it should pop up right in the front. Um. Jay Camacho versus Balaam led off the show. What do you boys think about this opening contest and the quarterfinal matchup of this? Oh, I'll start this whoa, one off. Coach whoa. Blue yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> wow. That's impressive. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll give, we'll give the Crusader Sorry. a minute to gather himself. No, 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 it's okay, bro. Gather yourself up. You're all right. You're all right. Um, Jay freaking Camacho. Jay freaking we gotta, Camacho. What a match. The kid, I said it the other day, and I'm going to say it again. The kid is hot the size of a freaking basketball, the size of a freaking Volkswagen. I don't care. The kid really has no quit. He threw such a great match. And not to say that I don't think Lobo Loco Balaam was ready for it, because I think he was. But I think it just took him by surprise how long it took to put him away and how much effort it really did take to put somebody who has, you know, not saying he doesn't have as much experience, but bro, let's just be honest. Like he doesn't have as much big match experience as Balaam Lynx does. That's just a, a documented fact right here. And this is a big time match starting off the tournament opening match of the show. This is huge. And he throws everything except the kitchen sink at Lobo Loco Balaam, but as hard and as fast as Camacho fought, is exactly the amount of effort and and like intent that Lynx put into the finish. Balaam knows how to finish matches and get wins. And he does end up getting the win here and moves on. But I really got this feeling, and it's going to be good. We're going to see Balaam in a big second-round match as well. There wasn't a single sleeper match on this whole card, and we started with intensity and we finished with intensity later. But I think Jay Camacho Coastal is close to something. We are seeing him hang in there with the likes of these veterans like Damon and Balaam and everybody. And he's so young, he's far smaller than a lot of these other co- opponents that he's going up against, but he's throwing some of the best matches of his life against these guys. Do you think maybe he just wrestles up? Instead of going in with a game plan, he's got maybe some plan A or plan B, but then he's got plan arrow up because everybody he's looking at is bigger, more experienced. I don't know if it's so much that, Marky, or if it's he can... A lot of young guys, especially in sports, can be susceptible to playing to their competition rather than playing at one level the whole time or at this point wrestling at one level at the whole time. 
they'll come out and they'll look amazing against top tier talents. And then they don't look as good while still looking good against, you know, lesser opponents. It's one of those things he's got to channel, but he is on to something. You're right. It is one of those things where he is going to figure out how to always get at that level. And then when he faces some, you know, lesser talent, picks up some wins, and then he's a momentum guy. You can tell yeah. when things start going, he's going to snowball, and it's just going to be win after win, and he's going to get rolling. He needs a spark. He's a dynamite keg right now. Yeah, he's, a good he's, call. he's got to light that fuse, and I don't know what it's going to take, but he's very close. Very, very close. This match is a key for tonight, or last night. You're going to see in a lot of matches, young frustration sets in. These more experienced guys in this tournament, a lot of them are getting frustrated by how hard it is to put these new guys from the Alistair Wrestling Academy away. Mm-hmm. And again, Balaam ends up beating Jake Kamatsu and moves on into the semifinal round where he is going to end up facing Johnny Casanova because Johnny Casanova ended up beating Remy D in a very hard-fought match here. Um, what are your thoughts on this match, and and where does Remy D go from here? I mean, I think first and foremost, Remy D from here needs to get healthy because you can obviously tell for both guys in this match, they wore out a particular body part. They both had a game plan. For Johnny, obviously, it is setting up that bicep uh, cutter, it, you know, that ripper. That arm bar he uses, he's going to go there. Remy Remy has a number of different ways to finish people, as we've seen. He has many different finishing maneuvers, but tonight he concentrated on the, the legs, and that was such a good idea because Johnny can explosive, high-flying. He has that in his repertoire, and if you take his legs out, he can't strike, he can't kick, he can't use submissions because everyone thinks that that is just solely upper body strength. It's not. You look at Johnny, he has to have those legs positioned correctly for that bicep ripper to really take advantage. So that was really good strategy by both guys here. I am amazed at the heart both of these guys showed. I've used a lot of words to describe that little rat, Johnny Casanova, on this show in the past. Some good, some bad. I'm going to use one tonight that I haven't used. That's gutsy. Tonight, or last night, showed a lot of what Johnny Casanova is made of. He beats Remy D, who honestly has been on a roll. Now, was Remy preoccupied possibly by thinking about having to face global local Balaam in the next round? We know that they've had some issues. Uh-huh. Maybe. Maybe. I think that that bicep marquee is really, really hurt for Remy because Johnny didn't even really have that bicep ripper in the whole way, and Remy had to tap quickly. Well, to so be I fair, think- to be fair, the referee missed a call there. I'll let the referee talk on that one then. What's your thoughts on that one? Yes and no. Explain. Yes and no. I I I, I sympathize with Alex in this given situation. So we saw. All right. I just want to go back through the match. We'll get. Let me interrupt you real time. quick. I'm sorry. Uh, Lee Mouth Champion. Hey boys, I'll catch you again sometime. I'll bring the kids to bed. Have a great rest of your stream while All donating a right. hundred bits. Thank like you, le champion of the, the math champion. All the math things you do well. You have lots of math bubbly. Yes. <laughs> Good. Um, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Go where ahead. the hell? Where the hell was I? Yeah. yeah. Um, no. It, Johnny picked a body pot. Remy picked a body pot. Both one that suits each other's game. We don't normally see Remy do it like this though we see johnny do this we see johnny go to set up for one move and he spends almost a whole match setting up one move right whatever it may be and now lately he's been using this bicep slicer this like modified arm bar of his that really puts the pressure and cranks on that elbow and bicep and a guy has to tap once he gets that thing locked in and you're right coastal he really does have to put his whole body arms and legs especially against a competitive bigger like Remy D is. I think a real big difference maker came in this match. Yes, Remy had been going after 
Casanova's leg in the area. He even tried to get that figure eight on wicked early in this match. A big game breaker kind of move happened when Casanova came off the top rope with that double knee attack and hit Remy in that arm. That, from then on out, Remy really wasn't the same. He was more protecting that arm instead of going on the offense. So right then and there, I really feel like the scales tipped in Casanova's scale here. And 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 it, it's painful to say, but when you watch somebody that goes out with a plan and executes it, Casanova does it very, very well. And he's probably going to screenshot this and use this on his Instagram story too. But at the same point, you got to give him a little bit of props. Now, Remy at the end... Had to tap. Number one, it's smart that he taps. Okay, to get out of that move, prevent as much damage as possible. And we even see somebody later on in the evening tap very, very quickly just to get out of what could be a detrimental move. And we'll get to that in a little while. But I want to get to the situation at which the submission occurred. If you are the referee in that given moment, yes, you have to keep your eye on both competitors. But in my mind... I would have been right where Alex was. I would have been there checking on Remy, seeing how Remy was, because Remy is the one in distress, and Remy is the one that at that moment has the ability to end the match with a tap. Casan half of Casanova's head, yes, clearly was under the rope. But in the referee's defense, and I'm not just defending the ref, his job right there is to keep his eyes on Remy D. Do you think and it I was can't right? Say I wouldn't have done anything different. Do I you... don't think I'm going back to old me here, but it, he didn't use it as an advantage. No, he didn't. And that's why I'm trying to be as neutral. Yeah. If he grabbed the rope with the other arm okay, or four. like put his head up on yep. there and tried to crank it, you know, so we got some leverage. Okay, break it now. Get the hell out of this. That count. Yeah. I've disqualified Johnny Casson over in a match for not breaking a hole when he should have. In this situation, it he didn't. It's like more like a bent rule than a broken rule. And but I at the same time, and Alex, I the benefit of the doubt that he made the right. And call. I see where you're going with that. And I'm not saying that you're 100 percent wrong because you are a ref and you have been in those situations. As the rules would say, I, you can quote me in chat if I'm wrong because RMP has a lot more different rules than most wrestling companies. Any body part that's underneath the rope is technically an automatic rope break no matter what, whether he was using it as an advantage or not. Dimes okay. to donuts. I just find it funny, Patriots fan over here talking about rule bending. I... What do you mean rule bending? I'm going by with the, the book here. What are you talking about rule bending? So I offer this supposition for that as well. So if he's over there taking a look more at where Just have a discussion. head is. Right. If he's paying more attention to the person initiating the submission than he is the person who's in the submission. Or right? he misses the tap. He yeah. misses the tap. Now Remy's getting even more and more hurt. That arm gets destroyed. Now who's it on? Now who's it on? Because they didn't make the right call to end the match when it should have been ended. Now, if Casanova holds on to it after that, now it's on the ref. He has the possibility of reversing the decision. But that didn't happen. As soon as the bell rang, the guy let it go. So... Casanova let it go. So does Remy have a beef with video evidence? And that's kind yeah, of maybe. what I'm getting at, too, is because you saw the reaction on his face after the match. Right. That he felt once again that he got screwed over. You know and what I'm saying? in a small way, he did. Mm -hmm. But as I'd say a referee, 50-50. you got to end have that match true. with the tap, and you have to watch the person in the submission to end that match when it ends. And then, like I said, if the other guy hangs on to it, Casanova being the knucklehead that he is, mm -hmm. all right, if he doesn't let it go, then ref has complete authority to reverse the decision if he, you know, counts him to let him go. Just because the bell rang doesn't mean the ref's authority ends. That's the other thing, too, and we've seen Casanova try to weasel his way out of that. So, at that point, does Remy have a potential beef? Yes. But I... How far is that going to go? I still think the referee made the right call. I'm not trying to spite my friend Remy D because he is my friend and I love seeing him every no, time. No, no. And this is him. one of the unique aspects but, that we have on this show is that we have somebody who is experienced like a Marky Pins over here.
that can kind Thank of you. have a discussion about this because by the rules is technically a rope break, but talking about it with a guy who has been in that situation obviously right. has a different opinion right. and it makes sense on his part as well. So I would try to do what I could as the referee, not to keep them safe, but to make sure that like at least order is held. And in that submission, the least of the evils is that Casanova's forehead was under the bottom rope. It's not gladiatory violence. You're not fighting to the death. Like, Remy D, I'm sure, has a very different opinion on this. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> I, and I understand that, but as a guy who has put on the purple, has put on the stripes, my main concern would have been there to end the match the minute the man had to tap from paint. Perfect. That's the exact and conversation we And I think Ref we Alex needed. did the same thing. I think Ref Alex did that exact same thing. So for all you Remedy fans who thought that Remedy got fucked, again, like Coastal said, like like Coastal said, half and half, which I think it's fair. I think it's a fair assessment. All right. You're out of line, but you're not wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 All right. Let's move on because that – Match is going to cause some problems for Johnny down the line, obviously. Uh, yes, but we it does. need to talk about Queso versus Damon Ace here in the third qualifying match here in this tournament. It's another, like I said earlier, these young guys really, really are hard to put down. And what we see, um, Damon gets really, really frustrated because he just, he just can't seem to do it. I mean, he finally does take care of business, let's face it. I think we all kind of knew how this was going to go. I mean, to take nothing away from the young man, but come on, it's Damon. And he's had a particular hair across his behind lately. Um, So he was out to make a point. He made a point. I'll get right to it after the match. Um he knew what he I was think doing. He made more than one point. I honestly well, think he made more than one point. I'll I'll get to you. Know, yeah, we'll, we'll keep well, going. The biggest thing I want to talk about is he knew Dustin was back there watching, and he knew it was gonna he was gonna try and do it again. That's kind of what they've done. They traded back and forth since Dustin has returned to coming in after a match. Damon is ready this time. I think Dustin needs to take a cold hard look at this Damon and realize he's not the same Damon that did what he did two years ago. He's smarter. He's more calculated. He's more vicious. He's more experienced. Tonight was a little taste of how he can set you up. He has no regard for his own body. All he has regard for is hurting you. So he made a point by winning the match and then showing, hey, even after I won this match, my plan is still what I'm doing. This guy must... Can you imagine Marky Damon's room? It's got just got to be thumbtacks and red lines everywhere on the walls. Oh, I'm sure. Tech marks of everybody that he's beaten, their names yeah. underneath it. You know, um, but in in many ways, you got to give the man props in this match. You, you, you got to get, he's my arch nemesis. He's somebody that never has anything decent to say. I don't like sharing a ring with him, even when I've had to ref his match. I honestly... I'm in fear because <laughs> he put that in me at one point. And, you know, to be honest, this makes him even scarier. You watched this match last night to see what Damon Ace can have in a gas tank. Look, he got rocked, and we saw it on that initial crossbody. Queso did what you're supposed to do against Damon Ace. You ha- I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it to anybody who has to wrestle Damon Ace. If you don't come out fast, quick, and impactful right away. Over. You are done. You are done. If you don't, if you give Damon time to breathe, find his feet, and initiate his offense, it is already too late. You have Unless to blitzkrieg you are, him. You really do. That is a great way to say it. If you are a chess fan, you know exactly what a blitzkrieg is, and it's one of those win in six, seven moves kind of thing. Otherwise, it is going to be a very long game for you. Your pieces are going to be in the wrong place, and you're going to get checkmated. And Damon showed. He has so many ways to checkmate. He had the wherewithal, even after he got gonged, all right? Like that crossbody, Queso really threw everything he could into it. Damon gets gonged. He takes a walk and gathers himself and then comes back like the gladiator that he absolutely is, all right? Getting rocked, 
not knowing where you are for a second. And then coming back in, he hits one of the most vicious shotgun drop kicks we've seen in an absolute long time. He even withstands another fast flurry out of Queso and then has the wherewithal to catch him off the corner rope for a, a second rope spine buster. After getting rocked, after trying to refigure out where he is against a fresh opponent, okay, the kid did everything right. The kid did everything right. Damon just showed that he didn't do enough. And this is something Jay uh, 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 Queso will learn as he moves forward against some of these bigger and more experienced opponents. But Damon A showed that he is one of the biggest, if not the biggest dog in the yacht in RMP tonight. And a lot of people in the locker room, whether you have a belt around your waist or not, really need to have paid attention to this because you can have Damon down, out cold, and having him need to really kind of remember what his name is. And you could still very well lose that match mm -hmm. in impactfully dramatic style. Props to Queso for hanging in there as long as he did. But honestly, I got to give props to the big man, Damon Ace, for finding a way to win out of this match. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to say my two cents here on this situation because you guys cover the match exactly how I thought you were going to cover it. Um, so how do I go about this? As sensory as possible here. Just because of the platform that we're currently live on. Um, you remember, we've had issues with Ace, bro. Yeah, no, no, it's not going to be like that. R relax. All right. Relax. Make it sure. For all of you effing D-bags, I think I sensed it pretty good right there, um, that still think this sport is fake. Come on now. Oh. Come on now. If that wasn't a sign right there, I don't know what is. Um. Got to give major props in this match. Marky said it earlier. Damon got rocked. And we're not going to go into too much detail, but from what I saw... It was, it was noticeable. You know, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, the symbol went up. Let's, let's be honest here. Right. Um, right. For him, and I'm going to give kudos all the way around here. Damon, doing his thing, got his wherewithal, came back as a true professional that he is, I hate him or love him. That's who he is. And you can't take that away from him. I'm sorry. Queso not getting frazzled and continued the way that he did and performed pretty much as best as he possibly could against Damon Ace after the fact. Kudos to Queso. And kudos right. to ref Eli for making the, the right decision. In I my agree. Eyes. All right. Everything cooled down. Match continued. Everything was great. Everybody involved. Awesome. Damon can be a D-bag at times, obviously. But, Back. but you give kudos where kudos lie. And he proved exactly how much of a professional he is. So I want to give him the props there. Queso for being as, as semi-new that he is. Um, not being frazzled during the match and continuing the match and performed fantastic. And Eli with the wherewithal to be involved in that situation and really kind of settle everything in and made sure everybody was safe and ready to go to continue the match. So kudos to all. That was my piece on that match. Everybody involved, A-plus effort. That's okay. all I got to say. All I got to say right there. And again, it's not fake. <laughs> That's all I, say. I hate that word. I do. I too. hate that word. But I hate that word. Considering the platform that we're on, I felt like I needed to say that. I hate that word so much. So, Only anyways, people who've never let's done continue. it say that. Yep. So. Only people who've never done it. Exactly. So, moving on here. Zamore, which we'll talk about a lot tonight, going up against a newcomer, Dylan Anderson. Who, in my mind, I think had probably had his best match of his young career thus far. Your thoughts? Hundred percent. I mean, Anderson showed tonight that last night he's the last night. I'm sorry, he's the real deal. He really is. I mean, he goes toe to toe with a dude that's on a roll right now, as we see later on tonight. And he had him so frustrated. The hand wraps came off, and 
it just you could see the just look of disbelief every near fall for Zamora. And he had to dig real deep to get through this. And I think this set the tone tonight for Zamora. Uphill battles all night long, no easy outcomes. And what a big win it was to set it off the night for him. Yeah, between these two guys, they beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. Yeah, Dylan did. Anderson showed that while he may not be as big as a Zamore, he fights just as hard as a Zamore. I mean, Zamore had the power advantage throughout this match. Let's face it. Let's just be honest. Anytime Dylan tried to come back, Zamore was right there to shut it down. Big power move. A couple body slams. You saw a few in a row. We saw a bunch of the splashes. Like, Zamori's doing everything he can do. He even tried to put him out cold with a sleeper on the mat, and the kid just wouldn't go out. And you could see, maybe not the frustration, but just Zamore's patience wearing thin. You know, this kid's new. And we, we see it earlier in the first match when we saw with, with Lobo Loco Balaam and Jay Camacho. Same thing. Not necessarily frustration, but what do I got to do to put this kid away? This is a big-time tournament. I should be shining right now. And Dylan shined like a diamond, just like the song says. Shine and he really like did shine that brightly. Shine bright like a diamond. Uh, but Zamore came out on top in this match. He ends up hitting that Samoan drop. It was basically the last move that he hadn't hit Dylan with, and it ended up working. But the amount of respect and props between these two guys before and after the match was very impressive. I love seeing the good competitive na nature of things, the respectful competition, which is exactly what it was. Dylan Anderson, you're going to go far. This new crop of, of the reckless with guys like Dylan Anderson, and, you know, it, it's blending, it's meshing very, very well each year in and year out. We're seeing this next crop of three or four come to the limelight and just go forward. Dylan is off to a great path right here. He hung toe-to-toe -to -toe with pound for pound probably one of the strongest guys in rmp if not the strongest guy in rmp pound for pound came up a little bit short but as we're going to find out later this was Zamore's night and there was nothing going to distract the universe from that and let's just go back to the past month or so zamori has been on the roll and then he's hit a couple road bumps small road bumps but he's able to bounce back every time and he like you said and we're going to talk about Zamori a lot tonight he had himself a night and probably a night that he desperately needed. And uh, going over to Dylan Anderson, I like this kid. I really yeah. do. I like what he yeah. does in there. For, for And for being so new to the game, um, I am definitely excited to see what Dylan Anderson is going to bring to the table at Rocky Mountain Pro in the near future. 100% standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guy like Zamore, exchanging forearms, no fear in his eyes. He's brand new. This is a former charge champion, a former ignition champion. Like, <laughs> he just stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and said, let's go. And it's great to see out of the young ones standing toe-to-toe -to -toe saying, let's go. Yes, some of them are paying for it. But every single time you do it, that XP bar grows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pains grow. The bumps and bruises grow. The ice pack, the number of ice packs might grow. But so doesn't that damn XP bar. Good for All the right. kid. And that was your last quarterfinal, quarterfinals match of the evening in this tournament. Um, before we continue on again, if you guys missed the show, we're talking about Supercharge from last night. You can watch it exclusively on YouTube as a paid member of the Tier 2 variety for $9.99. Not only will you get Supercharge, but you will also get every Mile High event going forward into the future as long as you re-up every month and not only that you'll get the back catalog of all the other mile high events from the past to go back and watch and really kind of get a good history of rocky mountain pro just in that aspect but you can also go back for free as a subscriber and go back and go through all the charges and all the ignitions and all that stuff from the past there's a whole archive of rocky mountain pro to touch on if you're brand new here so Make sure you head over to youtube.com slash Rocky Mountain Pro and at the very least, go hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch what we're talking about tonight, make sure you become a member at tier two for $9.99. Best 10 bucks you could put on the internet wrestling, period. On the wrestling internet, I should say, period. All right, let's continue on here with the semifinal matchups here in this Charge Championship tournament here on Supercharge. Balaam Lynx. 
and Johnny Casanova. Casanova's still reeling. That knee's messed up. You know, he's hurting like crazy. Lobo Loco had a great match against Jay Camacho. So you would think, one would think anyway, that Lobo Loco Balaam has 100% of the advantage in this match. And, and to be honest, he did. He did. Johnny Casanova was fighting defensively the entire time. Not necessarily fighting not to get hurt, but trying to use that leg as much as possible. And even when he tried to use it with a kick or two, you could tell he did just as much damage to himself. And and Balaam is hip to this, and he checks it out. And he just keeps Casanova down, keeps him on the mat. Balaam made one mistake in this match. He made one mistake. And towards the end of it, like Casanova really had to pick his spots. And one spot kind of fell into his lap. We've seen Balaam go for that springboard forearm. We've seen him do the springboards many times. He slipped off of the top rope and kind of looked like he might have hit his head too. He got up a little bit woozy. But that little weasel Casanova, that little opportunist that he is, picked yet another spot after being behind the entire time. Showed enough resourcefulness. And we got to put a little bit of praise on it because he did show some timing. He might have been in pain. He was reeling. If you go back and watch the match, Balaam was wrecking him <laughs> for this whole match. And we thought Balaam was going to win this match. But Lobo Loco slipped off that top rope and Casanova hits a quick neck breaker. And it was more like a rude awakening, like Rick Rude's old neck breaker where you gong the guy's head on the shoulder and gets the quick win yeah. and got out of dodge real, real quick. So Casanova comes up with the win coastal on one leg and just literally the entire time picking spots, but just had that spot kind of just fall into his lap. He had a hot fought match against Remy D. He got his ass kicked in this match, but he was just there for that quick three second count. I don't know so much if it fell into his lap and I hate to give Johnny Casanova this much credit, but he's a veteran. And I think he realized he's like, all right, I don't have a wheel. I can't, I don't have quickness. I can't strike. He, he tried it a couple times. As you said, he tried some kicks, but he quickly realized, okay, I I'm limited offense here. So what does he do? I really think he's tried to play as much defense as he could and mm -hmm. just find an opening. And it's just a veteran. And this is why he was a tag team champion for so long. He just, he found a way to win. And you said he got out of Dodge quick. I got to think that he got out of Dodge quick because now he's thinking I'm maybe at most 65% and I either have Damon Ace or Zamore. Right. Like that, that's going right. to be terrifying. If you're in the shape Johnny Casanova is at this point. So I think he was just trying to get as much rest as possible in between this. I got to give him credit. This is the best I've seen Johnny Casanova look since he's returned. And honestly, since he's returned, he's been more focused. He's been winning more. And I think he's really got a good handle on the singles wrestling stuff, uh, Mackey. I mean, well, he's yeah, a former he's Ignition champion. But he's also <laughs> saving a lot of money since he switched his car insurance to Geico and started spending one ninety nine on those little sundress robes that he's been wearing to the ring. So you maybe think... that's helping his confidence a little bit. Are those he buys those in the junior what kind of robe section of those? Nordstrom Rack. He buys those, those in the junior section of Nordstrom Rack. Oh, it's terrible. What? What kind of robe is, is that? They... Is that like the spa the robe or something? ninety nine off the clearance rack at a Walmart somewhere in some wicked seedy neighborhood. I think we saw them actually at the Walmart we went to over there and we before we left Denver that time. There's no way either of those cost more than five bucks, so he's just happy he's saving money. Do they have Dollar Generals out there? That, that might be where he gets them. Probably. Oh, Probably. that's everywhere. I hear it's, it's, a pool robe. it's a pool robe. It's a kind a of a spa robe. robe. Okay. I prefer my pool, my, I prefer it to be ools. No pee in it. I like to keep Can it that way. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus. if you work at the spa and you see him come walking in with that on and you gotta like oh, you gotta spa that person? Like that's exactly when I'm taking my lunch break. I'm not sparring <laughs> that guy. All right, moving on to semifinal match number two. Big one, probably as big as it gets at Rocky Mountain Pro here. Zamori going yeah. up against Damon Ace, and I mean literally. There was an old video game, if you're of a generation, called um King of the Monsters. And it was basically Godzilla and Kong fighting. That's kind of what this was. 
to a sense. It's just two giant human beings beating each other up. And boy, did they ever. They threw bombs. They... And here's the thing we, we got to think about. It's a tournament. Every match is important. And we find out extremely important here. Because Zamore ends up winning this match, I think, because of Damon getting gonged in that first match. Because if you notice, it is back and forth, and it's a coin flip. Mm -hmm. Up until the last yeah, minute Damon of Ace that wasn't match. Damon Ace. Huh? Damon Ace wasn't Damon Ace in that second match. He wasn't, but he was fighting. Like, he's a wounded animal, and yeah. it's almost more dangerous when he's wounded. That's because, a great analogy, yeah. yes. Because he's fighting on just pure adrenaline at this point. Yep. The difference maker is when he gets in the corner and is sitting and Zamori goes in and hip attacks him. Yep. The match is over there because Damon is out. The last chancery didn't need to happen because Damon's out when he's in it. You see the ref immediately. That arm, it's down. He was out right. when he was in it. His body that was limp. limp. Very quick. He yeah. just went limp. He yeah, I don't think he was there. Getting gonged in that first match set up that hip attack, and that hip attack was it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Zamore knew that, but kudos to Zamore. For as you said, Marky, when you get an advantage on Damon Ace, don't let him breathe. He didn't celebrate the fact he hit that hip attack. He went, grabbed immediately, last chancery, put that match away. This is that veteran leadership and presence that Zamore is finally starting to feel after having such a great last year. He's starting out this year. He's, I think he understands he is now one of the established tenured vets, professionals there, and he acts like it in this match. He All wastes zero time at any point in time. Zamore wastes none. And Zamore took a pretty good beating. We talk about a wounded animal in this match. These two guys throwing haymakers and bombs back and forth. Damon showed a lot of smarts in this by actually attacking Zamore's foot in area and his like ankle and knee. We even saw Damon those Achilles. chops. He started chopping Achilles tendons in the bottom of the foot, stomping the foot, doing everything that he could to make Zamore be on Vi one wheel. Violently intelligent as Coastal always loves to call mm. Damon Ace. And even as a wounded animal, you still felt like he had that shot because if Damon Ace catches that adrenaline shot, look out, cook out. All right, at that yep. point. But tonight, tonight was Zamore's night of adrenaline. He caught Damon in that corner. And Last you're right, night. Costa, I don't think the chancery was necessary. But like they say in every sport, play till yeah. the whistle. Play till the bell. Absolutely. Play till the ref. Play every, and you just have to. And he let it go instantly. Because ref canceled the match right away, and he dropped him, and he didn't try to inflict any more damage. He got his W, and he moved on, because he also well, knows he yeah, has one more he, match to go. He inflicted a little more damage. We let Damon go, and Damon face planted into the mat. Well, that's not his fault. That's not True. his fault. He dropped, that's, that's not Zamore's fault whatsoever. Not in the absolute least bit is that Zamore's fault. He won the match, and he broke the hold, and the match is over after that. Ref can help Damon out of the arena if he needs it. But courageous effort, great effort on Damon Ace's part. Absolutely. But like I said, this is Zamore's night. See, I thought... You got to wonder how many people tried to stop Damon from going out there. You see, during, during, during the first match, when, when he got rocked a little bit and he got his wits yep. about him and he finished off the match against queso when i saw dustin yurik try to go after him and damon ended up taking dustin out during that sneak attack that dustin was trying to do i thought that damon was back to the old damon himself apparently not but he wasn't right when he came out you could tell he was still a little woozy well here's the he other thing there, but he was there and you still can't doubt it when that man shows up i can doubt that he wasn't all there though because we know Damon. He wasn't just about to just persona non grata and leave Dustin. I don't even, I, I think he might have just did that like somebody's attacking me. I don't even fully know if he knows it was Dustin because I have a feeling he just hopped on him and kept punching him. Possible. Possible. Another kill shot onto a chair or something yeah. like that. Like Damon is not just one move and walk away. No, not no. until he breaks a bone or severs some tendons yeah. or something. So your finals is set for this charge tournament with Z uh, Zamore going up against Johnny Casanova. However, first, before we talk about that match, 
there was some Lockettes action to talk about last night, and that was Noel versus Lola the Adventurer here. You guys' thoughts on this Lockettes match, and what a huge win and a huge momentum boost for Noel going into, you would think, an inevitable run-in with the Lockettes champion, Lilith Grimm. I think this is always what Noel is needing. She's needed support, but not so much in the ring as so much as around her. It's one of those things where she has the talent in the ring. It's obvious. She goes up against Lola, former number one contender. Been on a roll lately herself with a new attitude change. Now that she's got Smoke and Mirrors and Adrian, it's a different vibe than the Asylum or other places she's been. It's She can be herself. And if you notice, she looks more loose. She's wrestling a top tier for her right now, and she's picking up wins. This is a thing of, it's a lot like we talked about earlier. They're getting, these young wrestlers are getting there. They're starting to put it all together, starting to flow. You give her some momentum, these wins keep piling up. Lilith really needs to pay attention, because this is not the same little Noel that was fighting her two years ago, Marky. No, it's not. And I th- a big thing has been this newfound friendship with yeah. Adrian and Smoke and Mirrors. She, I think she probably feels like she belongs again somewhere because the asylum was that for so long for her. And then when that exploded, she was just kind of like, like a balloon, right? That was like floating through the air. It's still the balloon. It's still doing its thing. But it's all by itself and there's nothing guiding it except the wind blowing it all over the place. Now... With a bunch of other kind of like like-minded, almost like misfits kind of thing, right? They found this friendship amongst each other. And by the way, kudos to Smoke and Mirrors for getting their Scooby Snacks back. Absolutely. They were sharing. Lucky, good for them. Get it back from Echo and, and Brew. But this newfound friendship between the four of them, Noel shows so much confidence, adrenaline, and just intent in a match, man. I know those are words that we use here on the show all the time. But when we see it coming out of somebody that we haven't seen it in a while... It's nice to point out, and Noel shows a lot of that and ends up getting the win here because of it. She stays more aggressive. Lola tries to go into the nefarious bag of tricks. Adrian Mascara's on the outside. Look, some people would say, well, she cheated. No, she was stopping Lola from cheating. Lola had her foot on the ropes. Knocked her off. Lola gets distracted, and even Lola regained the advantage with the kick. But Noel said no with that beautiful, like, rolling jawbuster cravat. I don't know what the name of that move is, but it's just, like, three moves in one. And it gets a lot of Ws, and she gets another win. And we talk about Lola. Where's she going? Where's she headed? She looked a lot different than she did when we were talking about on Recharge, on when she came out on Charge, and she looked like she was miserable and in a rough state. She came back out, and she was her regular self. But Noel had her foot on the gas pedal from bell to bell. That's why she wins this match. Good for the kid. And you're right. I do think there is an inevitable confrontation with the Lock Edge champion yes. coming up very soon with Lilith Grimm. Because that story still has another chapter or two to be written in it. It really does. All right. It's finals time, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Samori going up against Johnny Casanova. The Green Machine going up against Vanilla Ice. I can't believe I, yeah, I, can't believe I have more nice things to say about Johnny Casanova, but yeah, you guys are on a roll tonight, man. man. I don't no, think listen, I've ever heard like, so many compliments come out of you guys about guys, him though. ever. Seriously, both of these guys, they both have unfinished business with the at the time charged champion Echo. They're both fighting for an opportunity to finish that, and Johnny obviously at a size disadvantage here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, And he just fights and fights and fights, and he's finding ways to get in his offense, even though his leg is, at this point, got to be just absolute jello. And he's going up against a guy who, let's be real, twice his size. Yep. And he's taller, so he has a reach. Like, honestly, every... This match should not have been as close as it was. And... I give all the props to Johnny for that. But Zamore, this is 8 to 12 months of work paying off. This is why you put in those terrible long sessions at the gym 
when you can't go anymore, this is the outcome you get. You get, when times are tough, you dig down, and you're able to put away a veteran like Johnny Casanova, and you're able to do it after he's kicked out of repeated attempts to finish him. He didn't get frustrated. He didn't. Old Zamore would have gotten frustrated and made a mistake, and Johnny yep. being the veteran he is, especially in this mindset, would have capitalized on it. And that didn't happen. Big props to Zamore. Spoiler alert, he's not done yet, but Marky, I'll let you finish uh, about this match. No, it's, it's yet again, uh, a very similar story to what we saw in the last Johnny Casanova match when he wrestled against Lobo Loco Balum. He was fighting from behind the entire time, picking his spots. But every time Zamore has that power advantage, he'll always have it. I mean, maybe not always. But like yo against eighty five to ninety eighty five percent of the time, yeah, I was about to say. Right, yeah. he'll have that power advantage. So anytime Casanova tried anything, forearms, Zamora just shrugged that off and looked at him and said, "What the hell are you doing?" It it really took Casanova to chop block a guy and then start going after his head. And we see Casanova do that. He chop blocks him. He goes after the head with a bunch of shots. I think he need him in the head once or twice. Yeah. Um, this is Casanova's only chance to win this match. At this point, Zamora made no mistake. Casanova bent the rule again. Went after the chop block, got admonished, but then at the same point, here we go again. Now Zamora has to fight back one more time, and he absolutely does. He powers out of that bicep slicer that Casanova manages to pretty much get on, but Zamora's too strong. And it's been his M.O. this whole tournament. Just stay stronger than the other guy for one beat longer, for three seconds longer, for a couple extra breaths longer than the other guy. And Zamore shows in true fashion <laughs> that he is ready to be on the top of the RMP mountain and to win this tournament. And he ends up coming out of it with that beautiful driver, plants Casanova's head in the middle of the ring. And one, two, three, we have a victor of the tournament, and it is Zamore in fashionable style to win with a huge power move and just plant that dude Casanova. It was gorgeous to watch. After giving Casanova as many props, just watching him get his head planted was kind of cool to be like, dude, you made it to the finals. All right, go away. Go away. So this was Zamore's time. This was Zamore's night. But, John, I know you want to do some intro into the next match, but we weren't done. See, because we heard at the beginning of this match when Young Arias, some of the best pipes in all of professional oh. wrestling, announces that this match is for the number one contendership for the charge title to be cashed in any time. Which any is time. correct. We, he we heard those words. Not at Never Broken, not at Milestone, not anywhere. At any time. And boy, did we see it, didn't we, bro? Yes, we did, because during that finals match, we had a nice little uh, greeting from one charge champion himself, Echo Busan, with, of course, his companion, Brew. And you knew that they were planning to do something like this, because why would they be out there? Let's be honest. I mean, they just saw Zamori go through three grueling matches. I mean, literally, the list that Zamori went through, Dylan Anderson, which gave him hell during the first match, then Damon yep. Ace, and then Johnny Casanova. You, right. I mean, Zamori obviously is not going to be 100% through those matches. I'm sorry. Echo and we already that? saw Echo do this. Echo exactly. Did this to Sergei to get the charge title. Why wouldn't he try to make Echo Zamori this, wrestle again? Yeah, I right. think Echo really had, like, tempt him when he's hurt and tired, and I have Brew right here. And the one right. thing that worked was that he knows how much Zamori wants a the title and b wants his hands on echo and so echo used that to his advantage knowing that emotions would get the best of Zamori and Zamori would utter those words let's do it now and echo got what he wanted and I don't think he was expecting what was about to happen in this match. So the finals happened, but then we officially, right after that, no breaks, no pausing nope. whatsoever besides the promo from Echo, of the course. The two of minutes him that they were yeah. speaking, right. Of him the yapping. That Zamore got. Zamore versus Echo Busan for the Charge Championship 
on the very last match at the Wimmer Arena. Boys, what did you think about this match? When Crumpton rang the bell, I, up until that point, I he got in the ring, and I was really hoping we were going to see it, right? We've seen things like this happen on other wrestling shows where the guy comes out and tries to cash in or get the match, and then something happens, and we have to wait till next time. No. Crumpton rang the bell. And we had a ref, we had two competitors, we had the announcer give championship introductions, and here we go. And I tell you, it was an adrenaline fest for Zamore, because to be honest, and, and I know the big man's in chat right now, at that point, he's wrestled three matches, just got done wrestling in the finals, and if he doesn't get another shot of adrenaline or two, this could end up being rough. This ended up, this match ended up being a good solid 15 to 20 minutes after he already just wrestled in the final after his third match. So his I'm pretty match sure he wrestled a combined maybe 35 minutes up until that point, let's say. Yeah. At least 35 to 45 minutes somewhere in there before the damn finals. Like, this is insane with how well it goes. Samori so starts hot. Action goes to the outside. That's where Echo is going to take over. He's got that big buffalo out there. Brew doesn't touch him, but there's a distraction. We're going back and forth here. And there's been good back and forth. And Echo is literally as fresh as the other side of the pillow, man. And Zamore, you can see him, man. He's sweating. He's tired. But there's no give up. There's, there's just all hot, all adrenaline. And just a, like you see the look on Zamore's face. The wrestler is gone. The ass kicker is here because he knows it, it's not going to be a technical gem here. He needs to win this match with some big power moves, and he really does. The suplexes and the back and forth, it's just so very, very good. Echo tries to outsmart him, going to the arm here and there. Samori comes back again with more suplexes. And I don't know if you boys noticed this. Did you guys see Echo kind of lose his mind? Towards the end of the match here, he thought maybe this should have been over. He looks into the camera and there was somebody else there. That vacant stare from the guy that always had something snarky or, or passively funny to say maybe or whatever. There was just nothing but... And it wasn't like like like, like there were, the lights were on and nobody was home. Echo's whole demeanor just turned into this like evil villain. You know what I mean? <laughs> like He went from being a competitor to this like wicked evil villain very, very quick. And he kind of loses it up here in his mind a little bit. There's so much good back and forth. If you have not seen this match, even if you have seen this match, you need to go back and absolutely walk it again. It doesn't take one. It doesn't take two. It takes three of those, like, abdominal buster, like, sit-out drivers. The same move that he got Casanova with to finally put Echo down. Echo got his foot on the bottom rope the first time. Still a little wherewithal. A little bit of a weaker kick out on the second one. I think Zamore saw he was making some big progress, Coastal. And then on the third one, it was one, two, three time. And we saw the change of the title. Zamore is the new charge champion. The Wimmer Arena vibrated so hot. I think they have to leave the Wimmer structurally. I think the walls need to be repaired in the joint right now. Talk about Zamore, this rise. And what it now really kind of means, where does Echo and Brew go? What's this do to their heads? Uh, I think for Zamore, this this is the culmination of all the hard work he's put in the last two years, at least. Um, he, I'm just so happy for him. Like, yeah, this this is something I know that he's honestly needed. This validates his decisions to continue wrestling, to like continue working this hard for everything. It's got to be a great thing for him. And for Echo, this is another instance of you didn't get it done. It's one of those things where, yeah, you were champion. But the harder you squeeze sometimes, the more it all comes out. That face he made, Marky, I don't know if it was so much being, you know, if it was being a sadist or wanting to inflict pain as much as it was like, you ever seen somebody when they get so, everything just starts falling apart and they just start laughing? I think that's what it was. I think he kind of snapped, like, he realized all of his plans were done. Like, it wasn't going to work anymore. 
he realized he, he probably wasn't going to be able to put Zamori away the way he thought it was, and it was everything was falling apart in his head. And he couldn't have Brew help him. I think it was a realization of, oh, no, I failed. And then I think at that point it was desperation sinking in. That's to take nothing away from Zamori in those last moments because that was everything he had left yep. and hitting another gear. Like, I think he found a new gear, in, you know, last night. And it's only going to propel him further. Congratulations to Zamore. Because I completely agree. What this meant to him, I don't think anybody really realizes. Let me even put Zamore this. says right in the chat that it didn't even sink in until hours later. When you've been on autopilot that long and you're wrestling that much good competition all night long and then you don't know you're going to get your shot immediately after the final you get it you take it and then you win it i can only imagine it's that feeling of like you come out of the shower and you look on your table and there's the belt it's like oh shit yeah 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 Yeah. let me put this into perspective for you guys on how impressive this feat was all right Zamore literally wrestled last night a 60-minute, roughly, plus or minus a few minutes here or there, wrestled a 60-minute gauntlet match. For the yeah, most that's part. pretty fair to say. Against yeah. one of the heaviest hitting young guys that they have, Damon Ace, arguably the one of the greatest tag team and veteran wrestlers in there, Johnny Casanova, and one of the hottest charge champions at the moment or of date echo with a buffalo with a buffalo and, and the youngster got himself Dylan involved Anderson. he did bro put himself he in did. the match let's, a few times hey, took some let's talk about his face at the end though did you yep. see the what do we do now look yep i think echo needs to watch um he needs to learn and go back and watch the last few episodes of our rewind Needs to learn what Dean did to Hunter and not do that to Brew. So, there's only a few people that have had these type of gauntlets match and have gone on to win. Zamori so basically did that last night. And you could tell, and Coastal brought it up earlier, that this was a much needed moment for Zamori. And I can tell you right now, you could see the emotion in the ring at the end of the night. Him getting on his knees, you can tell he was visually emotional. He finally got through, past the gate, and now the future is bright for one green machine Zamore. Green machine, green machine, green machine. So what what a way to conclude our time at the Wimmer by having that stellar performance from Zamore wrestling literally all night and winning the charge championship off of of one Echo Busan. Game changer for Rocky Mountain Pro right there. Just last night alone, okay? So... What a way to send off Zamori being the new champion. Congratulations, Zamori. You've definitely earned it in our eyes, and I believe in the RMP faithful eyes as we saw the crowd giving you that standing ovation that you so desperately deserve. And place went bananas. And quite bananas honestly, and quite nuts. honestly, well overdue. Yep. So congratulations again, buddy. Um what was I going to say? Oh. So that concludes Supercharge from last night. Again, huge night. Literally changed the game in Rocky Mountain Pro going forward. Because you guys got to remember, we're literally just about on the road to Milestone 14. We're getting close to that. So huge landscape shift. It could also be said... For the night before, at Rumble in the Loud House, at the Ball Arena, where 
I'm sure Coastal, especially, was extremely overjoyed by the fact of the news that we all heard last night that we also had a little change in RMP in the Rocky Mountain Pro Heavyweight Championship because now we have a new Rocky Mountain Pro Champion and one making his return after months away after losing it at NRW. David Drake returns against Curtis Cole and beats David Cole. I mean, David Cole. Yeah. Curtis Cole in front of 4,000 yeah. members of the RMP faithful at the ball arena. In a street it's the, fight. It's the only thing that made being sick sufferable today was knowing ah. that that happened. So this weekend alone huge shift going forward as we're getting closer never thought i'd say that again but thank you (laughs) thank you for beating the black satan panties off him so if 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 people haven't seen the reel uh go check out rmp's insta or on their facebook share it up check it out david drake is back but it's not the same david drake we remember no it's not what a difference he's shaved his beard he cut his hair he's got this like i don't know prisoner jumpsuit on like or like tactician tactical suit on like you try and kidnap or kill anyone a problem i'm still not messing with this guy though in a way he almost looks scarier than he did before it's kind of like exactly what you said earlier, Coastal. When you see somebody and everything gone to like hell and shit, yeah. and and nobody has any, and they're standing there laughing hysterically, that's scarier. I don't know what's scarier: the yeah. old David Drake that we knew, or this or David Drake smiles. that we saw very briefly. Right. Well, we're about to find right. out, I'm sure, because I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of him on up and coming episodes of Charlie. <laughs> so Maury brings up a good point. It did look like Michael Myers. Without the Captain Kirk mask on, without the William Shatner mask, it really did, and that's scarier. So David Drake doesn't run; he just walks after you too. So we already knew that the outcome of that match via uh, the show last night it was aired. All right, programming alert for the week. Now that we've kind of wrapped things up. Tuesday typically is a charge, right? Every week charge make sure you tune in obviously 7 p.m out now time the whole the whole nine yards we are not going to be having charge this week instead however you will be seeing wrestling where you will see the entirety of rumble at the loud house and the ball arena so you guys get to witness everything including the battle royal including a few other matches that i'm not going to say because i don't have permission to say those but you will be able to see all those matches that happened that night on Tuesday. And then on Saturday, when we have our normal recharge, we'll be going over that briefly. So that is what is going on. It'll still be a charge episode focused on the Rumble. So there you go, folks, from the man himself. Okay, cool. Charge from the Loud House. Yes. A little bit different of a format, but I look forward to it. Sounds yes. good to me. So it is going to be a charge, but it's going to be specifically towards what happened last Friday at the Ball Arena. So that's what you got to look forward to this Tuesday. And then, of course, there will be the normal charges coming up right after that. So this is only a brief one-week special. So everything will be back to normal. Um, 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 um Other than that... We will be watching Milestone 4. Hopefully, Lucas will be back with us. And we'll be watching the first two parts of Milestone 4 next Sunday. And then, I believe... Oh, RMP is going to be at Beer Start this Friday coming up. So, if you're in the Denver area, make sure you too, make sure you go to Beer Start. And make sure you get your beers and make sure you get your pretzels. Because those pretzels are pretty good over there. Yo. They're so good with that lemon beer that they get. Yeah. The lemon uh, beer yeah. and the salt yeah. is so good. Oh, my God. And make sure you grab the best seat in the house because that place is always rocking. And I guarantee you it will be rocking again this Friday for more Rocky Mountain Pro action. So that is yes, this Lady Friday. Yes, Catherine, if you're there. Lemon beers, they're so good. It's they, almost they, like they a shandy almost. It's almost so, like a shandy. So they, yeah. They take their house slogger 
and then they take a like a San Pellegrino lemon limonada and they mix it in there. So it's like like a, I don't even drink much. Yeah. I don't really like to drink, but oh my god, if I lived out there and could get those, I would drink too much. Bruise and it Bruises could. Tour 2024. I love that. Bruise and bruises. That's coming around the corner. They're, they're going to start getting pretty busy. They're going to be traveling again very soon. So make sure you follow all of RMP socials so you are up to date on all the events that are coming in from Rocky Mountain Pro. Obviously, they are in the midst of a move going to the quarry, which is where everything is going to be from now on. Um, there will be more information to come as to times and dates and all that stuff on when all that stuff is going to take place. But we do know for a fact that the first show coming out of the quarry will be at the end of March for never broken. And we already know one match for that. And that is the Rocky mountain pro championship match between Briscoe crown who won aces wild last month is now brand new going to be going up against David Drake for the Rocky mountain pro championship and not Curtis Cole. Yeah. Cool. Good. So, Good. That is that. But are we sure? I was almost what? ready. Oh, I was almost ready to talk to Drew McIntyre into praying for Curtis Cole's demise. That seems to work lately. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, but did we replace one evil with a far greater <laughs> evil? We so don't I, know. know. You're gonna evil. have to. Sit I know. Down. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, yeah, listen, I would rather. Be scared of David Drake and have him not speak and have to listen to that visceral verbal diarrhea, Curtis Coles. And that is also, Coles has has got a point. David Drake hasn't talked in years, so we all know that we won't be hearing anything out of him. Or whatever Curtis Cole calls that. Yeah. Um, Before we go, however... We do have a redemption that we are going to at least shout out and be prepared for for next week. And that is Coastal's ASMR. All right. You're not doing it tonight, tonight obviously. Tonight because will be sick. brought to you by NyQuil. Yes, it will be brought to you okay. next week by NyQuil. Um, so I do have a topic for you for next week. We'll give you a okay. week to prepare for it. All right. Oh, this will be good. good as last week. What's the topic? I want to hear this. this <laughs> you think good. it's as good as last week? I hope so. Oh, I don't know, man. That I don't know about this one. Was outstanding, brother. Because Wait, of because of the did you the, come up with this or did somebody give you this? No, I come up with all of them. Okay, legit. Like it. Like during the course of the night, if we have a lot of topics going on and one pops in my head, that's the one I use. Sounds so, like, yep. Coastal, your subject for next week to prepare for. You are going to okay. be doing a two-minute ASMR broadcast, talking about the one and only. Vanilla Ice, Johnny Casanova. Oh, no! You <laughs> suck! Johnny, you suck. You suck. Oh, actually, wait, no. Ooh. No, 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 no. I rescind that. Coastal, he didn't say you had to talk good. I did not say I you had to talk good. Poll. I did uh, not say you had a, to talk good. We might good. have a poll reading next week. In ASMR? As long as you read it in ASMR yeah. style. Yeah. As long as it's an ASMR, you, I, I'm not saying you have to talk good or bad either. So Bring your bongos. It is all That's you. Fun. It is all you. But he did have a very good performance last night. Uh, he did. So yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. I think it's, I, I think it's definitely no, but, worth the subject. I'm not licking microphones and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Just stop. No. Well, he would, says no. ASMR could be sounds. doesn't have to be words. I'm, I'm not about that noise. Well, you don't have to shove your microphone down your throat. You're good, buddy. Just, just, just whisper nice, sweet melodies, dude. That's all. Yeah, this isn't the ear. That's channel. all. <laughs> yeah. Did they shut that shit down yet, or is that still like? Oh no, that's still thing. going, dude. That's still that's going. Terrible. That's that's so bad. Along with so with bad. along with hot tubs and bikinis. That's that's another topic. Well, that's man, yes, right now. That, that is what's on Twitch under the ASMR thing is people licking the microphone. That's why it popped in our head. We saw it one night. It's horrendous. And it was horrible. The wrong business. 
it had like 3,600 viewers. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm in the wrong business working my ass <laughs> off every day, running my own small business, kicking my own ass, cutting myself up, getting all dirty and greasy over here at the bowling alley. There's people sucking on microphones that look like ears, making like 10 grand a month. Where was this when we were like 20, 25? What the hell? Sometimes it sucks being Gen X. Yeah. yeah that's, it, honestly, that's basically that generation that's doing it, too. Everyone so forgot terrible. about us. Yeah. Our parents, they gave us keys. Just get in the house. They didn't want to be <laughs> get home. Get the hell out. <laughs> just come home when the street lights are on. We don't care. Yeah. All right. So that is what's We're going on this week. Okay. <laughs> so that's what's going on this week. Colson will probably do that on Truly. Sunday. So you have a full week to prepare for that. That's going to be outstanding. You have a po- write a poem about Johnny Casanova. I'll help. Ballad. If you want help, can you want to collaborate the, on this one? The, the Ballad of Johnny Casanova. Oh, the Ballad God. of Johnny the Kid. Because he's oh, Johnny the kid. Kid. <laughs> All right. So. Johnny Ice. So. We have a few minutes. Johnny Ice. So anybody in chat, you want to ask us questions, you want to talk about random stuff that let we were doing before we started talking about Supercharge, you're more than welcome to, because I got to get set up to raid anyway. So chat, the next five minutes or so, floor is yours. Oh, my God. We did say a lot of nice things about Casanova tonight, but I, we got to be honest. He had a hell of a Supercharge. He really, I was super really surprised pissed. about Drake, Aiden. I was super surprised. Yeah. Like, I did not have that on my bingo card anywhere. Nope. Favorite comfort nope. food from Lady Catherine Fake Queen? Lasagna. Ooh. Regular pot, pasta and sauce. Just a good old box of pasta and sauce. Um, Anytime, anywhere, doesn't matter. I will always stop and have a bowl of pasta. Or, or chili. There you go. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I, I had no idea that that that, that Drake would have come. That that, that was a moment, uh, you know. Maybe, maybe I I don't know. I can't wait to see the circumstances at which it happened. But there was also a picture of Curtis Cole with a microphone in his hand, so he may have very well said something stupid and poked oh, we, the, bear we he opened his mouth. the guy who drove around a van and kidnapped people. Why would you poke that bear? Or either way, however, David Drake show. Look, this is going to be a force to reckon with with all of us in R and B right now. That David Drake is back, as the landscape has changed as much. Now he is back to being the champion. We saw what he did last time when he was the champion. I am very curious what David Drake we're going to get from here going forward. I, will we ever hear him say a, a syllable ever again? Will he ever explain himself? Will he ever tell us what's going on? The image change. What's his goals out of this right now? Uh, so much shock and awe from from David Drake being back right now. It, it doesn't supersede anything of what's going on because right now the landscape of RMP is changing literally physically and talent-wise. Everything is changing. Belts are changing hands. Locations are changing. Like, there's so much promise. And how hard did RMP start 2024 here <laughs> with yeah. these tournaments? The title changes like this yeah. is how you come into a brand new year with a bang. The next few episodes of Charged are going to be really, really interesting. It's going to set the whole year, at least the next season, into milestone, into motion. Because right now, what we thought was one thing two weeks ago is something completely different right yeah. now at every level of R&P. Every level. Marky, the, the comfort food thing made me think of some favorite food or drink from your childhood you can't get anymore. Five Alive, the fruit drink. Can't Ecto. find it where. High C Ecto Cooler. I was oh, just going to say that. High C. God Five damn it. Yeah. Five Alive was better. Oh. Cool. Um, Five Alive was better. Five Alive was better. It had Slimer on it. Yeah, I know. Um, but it came in a small box. Five Alive was huge. Uh, no, yeah. you up in Maine, you could get the gallon jugs of the High C. The Ecto. Oh, could you? Cowtails. You still get yeah. cowtails. They still They're hard to find. They really they are, are hard to find. They are hard to find. They're really good if you put them in the freezer. Oh, that reminds me. I was supposed to get a couple bags of the Boston baked bean candies and send them to somebody out there in Denver. I remember talking about that at Aces Wild with a friend of mine in the back. 
I gotta send him a couple bags yeah. of those. I promised him I would. And Moxie, I gotta send him out some Moxie. Yeah, okay. I just want to see the reaction when they try that. Um, I didn't even say comfort food, did I? I'm gonna go with meatloaf. Oh, there you I, go. yeah. There you go. Meatloaf, I think is. Do you a like a choice. gravy top or a ketchup top? So, oh. so, so my what? mother, my mother did something completely different when I was younger. So she would make the meatloaf, right? And pull it out of the oven real quick. And while it was almost done, she coated the meatloaf with mashed potatoes all the way around and then baked it. What? <laughs> and then baked it. Is Mrs. Pins in the chat? I hope she heard that. <laughs> and and then, Ms. Pins, I think Miss Pins is sleeping. In case I'm going to inform in mashed potatoes tomorrow. Right, yes. right. So oh, when you cut food. it, it's almost like a beef like a Wellington cake. upside down yeah. almost. Yeah. And then oh, and then you just put a little ketchup, whatever. Not too much because you, you don't want to destroy the flavor of the meatloaf. But a little dab there, oh. don't hurt. And then, boom, you have... Homemade meatloaf. I'm weird about ketchup. It's not one of my favorite things. I put it on hamburgers and hot dogs. That's about it. That's same here. I use it for fries as well, but meatloaf is like an exception depending on the meatloaf. Sauce guy with French fries. Depending on the like, meatloaf. If the meatloaf doesn't have a lot of flavor yeah, in it and it's yeah. just like a regular like loaf of meat, I'll probably add a little bit of ketchup because at that point uh, yeah. it's it's basically like a burger in a way. But if there's sure. like flavor Pickle and stuff in it. there, yeah. yeah. But this is no. making me hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I'm stuck. When my I'm gonna mother go home and ask Mrs. Pins to make a meatloaf real quick. <laughs> when my mother made that for the first time, I was like, "Oh my god!" I just developed a new love for meatloaf. <laughs> I never, never heard heard of thought that, that I've had. Standing. That does. That is such a good idea. That's probably oh, why I, I was fat for most of my life. Like <laughs> I, I can't wait to have a true Philly steak and cheese in April. I've never had one. I want one. Yeah, we get to oh, experience Philly, that. Steak. We are definitely going. Yep. I want to go to Gino's and yep. we get one. You get a steak with. It's basically wit a reverse shepherd's cheese. pie. Yes. Lady Catherine hit the nail on the head. Hey, I, I put corn in my shepherd's pie, though. Yeah. What? And we put peas in it as well. Corn and oh, peas. Oh, you can do that, yeah? Yeah, you yeah. can do that. I like corn and peas. It's good. Mm -hmm. A little gravy on top of that. You just kind of like inhale it like like your mouth is just like Dude, the colonel's the colonel's famous bowls with the chicken chunks and the shepherd's pie. that was like my go-to in chaos mm -hmm. oh god i'm so hungry now this sucks food and so belts hungry. welcome to foods oh. and belts ladies and gentlemen this oh, is I'm basically so alter ego of our show here yeah if we live closer if you imagine the cooking show we could have foods and belts we bring on dave and ace and time to cook food <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, no, 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 hold up. Wasn't when I think it was, because it was when we had the other two knuckleheads on the show. When we had yeah. Reagan on the show with Lilith. Oh, that was a great interview. Yeah. That was yeah. such a... She, gra she grabbed the ketchup bottle when they were playing paper, rock, scissors or something like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, ketchup. Right. You, you and, win. And, 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 they, I, were, and they were talking about doing a cooking show or something like that. Imagine that. One. I think it would be you fun. Imagine cook, cooking with the RMP superstars. Could you imagine Reagan Grimes and and Triple I doing a cooking show together? Could you see that going any more than two episodes before Reagan just cast a spell and eat two Triple episodes? I? She's she's gonna do the first episode. <laughs> he's getting in that oven, like yeah, he's getting in that oven. I mean, he was already nicknamed I just Candy Corn for a reason. <laughs> Cooking with smoke and mirrors? Like, how yeah. fun would that be? There is a triple I-84 in the chat right now. Is that you, Josh? Is that you there? Wouldn't like Are me. you lurking? You remember that interview. If that's you, you remember that interview. We learned that you could play paper, rock, scissors, but spider can come into play. It was spider, hammer, or something like that. Right. Rock beats spider. 
spider beats paper. But I think scissors beats spider as well. I just know rock, paper, scissors, lizard, spot. Wasn't that Big Bang Boy. Theory or something? Yeah. All right. Hazard did some cooking on the channel a long time ago. Something like, oh, no. lizard poison Spock, Spock disproves paper, paper covers rock, rock crushes scissors, scissors cut lizard, something like that. All right. We are going to wrap everything up. I think we are all set here on the right. I think I've had it ready for a little Busty while guts? now. We just started. No, 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 no. DJ Yancey tonight. But again, score one or score 25 or score 25 for the good guys because it broke Mark once again. <laughs> I can't hear that name and not laugh. It doesn't hit as hard as it used to. But I cannot hear that name and not that's, laugh. I, I that's, that's because you have to add the accent in there where it needs to be. So my son is 15 now. Oh, and God. and we're, a lot, we're a lot more of like dudes together than I am like kind of his father. Like, you know, he's 15 and, you know, guidance is there. But like he's more like my best friend. Yeah. You know, like he's at that age where... I can speak with a man to man and stuff and we can laugh at do jokes and things like that and everything else. And, um, I told him about how you guys get me with this guy all the time. And he's like, well, what's the guy's name? And I said, bust the guts. And he fell on the floor <laughs> laughing. He, I didn't have to explain the joke. Those of you who are out there that are adults. You get the joke and we're not going to explain the joke. Right. You understand the joke. I didn't even have to explain it to my kid. And I was so proud, like, as a father. I just kind of looked at him, and I'm like, you're on your way, son. You're doing just fine. You're doing just fine. If you get that joke right out of the way, laugh. Enjoy it, because it is absolutely hilarious. All right, ladies. What a name. What All a name. right, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we're going to raid DJ Ansi tonight. He's watching some wrestling, as he always does. Nice. Show him some love. Let him know where you came from. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, for all of us here on the Do's and Bells, we hope you have a fantastic week. We hope you tune in on Tuesday for a special episode of Charge of Rumble at the Loud House that happened last Friday. And we will see you back here on Saturday for another episode of Recharge. For myself, Johnny Dethrop, Ghost Crusader, and Marky Pins. Until next time, folks, stay safe, stay classy, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, folks.